everyone so today we'll discuss about analyzing a simple protocol so first we'll see a simple application so what what's objective means in this scenario we suppose that Alice and Bob have access to a common network periodically at any time of uh, his choosing Bob wants to check that Alice is still alive and connected to the network so this is a main security objective which will be referred to as a check of liveness let's assume that Alice and Bob are just two entities in the network consisting of many such entities all of whom regularly check the liveness of one another perhaps every few seconds thus set a secondary security objective that whenever Bob receives and confirmation of liveness from allies he should be able to determine precisely which liveness query she is responding to so what's the goal of the protocol means whenever Bob wants to check that allies is alive he will need to send a request to allies which she will need a need to response to with a reply at the end of any run of a suitable cryptographic protocol the following three goals should be satisfied first one data origin authentication of allies reply if this is a this is not provided then allies may not be alive since the reply message might have been created by an attacker second one freshness of a allies reply if this is not provided then even if there is a data origin authentication of the reply this could be a reply of a previous reply in other words an attacker could observe a reply that allies makes when she is alive and then send a copy of it to Bob at some stage after allies has expired this would be genuine reply created by allies but she would not be alive and hence the protocol will be failed to meet its objectives third one assumption that allies reply correspond to Bob's request if this is not provided then it is possible that Bob receives a reply that corresponds to a different request so now we'll see over some of the notations so B represents the uh, array generated by Bob MACK represents a Mac computed on the data using key K EK represents the symmetric encryptor of the data using key K TA represents the ATM stamp generated by allies TB represents a time stamp generated by Bob IDS represents the session director so 9.2 uh, figure shows the candidate protocols okay where the protocol flow and message of our first candidate protocols so here 
we have three protocol assumptions one is bob has access to a source of randomness second one allies and bob already share a symmetric key k that is known only to them and third one allies and bob agree on the use of strong mac algorithm okay so first one that is bob has access to a source of randomness in this it is necessary because the protocol requires bob to be able to generate a nonce and also assume that this generator is secure in order to guarantee unpredictable of the output second one allies and bob already share a symmetric key k that is known only to them this is necessary because the protocol requires allies to be able to generate a mac that bob can verify third one allies and bob agree on the use of strong mac algorithm this is necessary because if the mac algorithm is flawed then data origin authentication is not necessary provided by it so the in first condition in first protocol it consists of the following steps the first one bob conducts the following step to form the request in that bob generates a nonce rb this is an implicit action second one bob concatenates rb to the text it's bob are you okay this combined the data string is the request third one bob sends the request to allies assuming that she is alive and able to respond allies conduct the following step to form the reply allies concatenates the nonce rb to identifier bob and the text yes i am okay so we will refer to this combined data string as a reply text so allies computes a mac on the reply text using key k the reply text is then concatenated to the mac to form the reply allies sends the reply to bob on recipient the reply bob makes the following checks bob checks that the received reply text consists of a valid rb concatenated to his identifier bob and the meaningful response to his query so second bob computes a mac on the received reply text with k with key k and checks the uh, checks to see if it is matches the received mac in third if both of these checks are uh, satisfactory then bob accepts that the reply and ends the protocol so we say that the protocol successfully completed if this is a case so how to analyze the protocol so protocol 1 meets the required goal then in first condition that is data origin authentication of allies reply so here under the second assumption the only entity other than bob who can compute the correct mac on the reply text is allies thus given that the received mac is corrected the received mac must have been computed by allies thus bob indeed has a assumption that the reply was generated by allies in second if freshness of the allies reply here the reply text includes the nonce rb which mob generated at the 
start of the protocol. Thus, by the principle, the reply is fresh. Third one, assurance that Alice's reply corresponds to Bob request. Here, there are two pieces of evidence in the reply that provides firstly the most importantly the reply contains the nonce RB which Bob generated for this run of the protocol. So by our first protocol assumption this nonce is very unlikely to ever be used for another protocol run. Thus, appearance of RB in the reply makes it almost certain that the reply corresponds to his request. In second one, the reply contains the identifier Bob. So, the four of the components of a, a cryptographic protocols are the protocol assumption. If the protocol assumption do not hold then even when the protocol successfully completes, the security goals are not met. For example, if the third entity, Charlie, also knows the MAC key K, then Bob cannot be sure that the reply comes from allies, since it could have come from Charlie. Second one, the protocol flow. Clearly, the two messages in this protocol must occur in the specified order since the reply cannot be formed until the request is received. Third one, the protocol message. The protocol goal are not necessarily met if the content of the two messages is changes in any way. And the fourth one, the protocol action. The protocol goal are not met if any of the actions are not undertaken. So uh, second protocol if we see. So here in second protocol the protocol flow and message of our second candidate protocol is given. So what will be the assumption? So in figure 9.3 that is protocol 2 is a very similar to protocol 1. In fact it is in the protocol assumptions that the main differences lie Bob has access to the source of randomness as for the protocol 1 allies has been issued with a signature key and Bob has access to verification key correspond to allies signature key this is the digital signature scheme equivalent to the second assumption of the protocol 1 so allies and Bob agree on the use of strong digital signature scheme. So we'll see the description of this protocol. The description of protocol 2 is exactly as for the protocol 1 except that instead of computing a MAC on the reply text, allies digitally signs the reply text using her uh, signature key. Instead of computing the Comparing the received MAC on the reply text, Bob veri verifies Alice's digital signature on the reply text using her verification key. So we'll see the analysis of protocol. The analysis of the protocol 2 is exactly as protocol 1, except the data origin authentication of Alice's key reply. Under second resumption, the only entity who can compute the correct digital signature on the reply text is allies. Thus, given that her digital signature is verified, the received digital signature must have been computed by allies. Thus, Bob indeed has assurance that the reply was generated by allies. Therefore, reduce the protocol to almost meet the three security goals. Third one, the protocol three, that is what uh, protocol assumptions are, they are identical to the protocol one. So 
so description is this is identical to protocol 1 except that in protocol 3 the identifier bob is omitted from the reply text so analysis is this is identical to protocol 1 except for assurance that allies reply correspond to bob request an argue of protocol 1 the inclusion of the nonce rb in the reply appears uh, superficially to provide this assurance since rb is in some sense a unique identifier of bob's request however there is an attack that can be launched against the protocol 3 in certain environment which shows that this is not always true since the attacker plays a role of mirror and this is reflection attack against the protocol 3 the reflection attacks working how it works we'll see let's assume that an attacker is able to intercept the block all communication between allies and bob and also assume that bob normally recognize that incoming traffic may be from the allies through the use of the channel rather than the explicit explicit identifier this is perhaps a unresponsible assumption but we are trying to keep it simple thus even allies is no longer alive the attacker can pretend to be alive allies by sending message on this channel the reflection attack works as follows first one the bob initiates a run of protocol 3 by issuing a request message the attacker intercepts the request message and sends it straight back to bob except that the text its bob is replaced by the text its allies at this point it is to suggest that bob will regard the receipt of the message containing his nonce rb and and rather strange and will surely reject it however resist the temptation to author promises the analysis of cryptographic protocol and recall that in most applications of this type of protocol both allies and bob will computing the devices following programmed instructions in this case bob will simply see the request message that appears to come from the allies and since he is allies will compute a corresponding reply message he then sends this reply to allies the attacker intercept this reply message and sends it back to the bob the bob who is expecting the reply from allies checks that it contains the expected field and that the mac is correct of course it is becomes a computer itself it himself so the reflection attack described in 9.5 you can see there the first run is initiated by bob who, who asks if allies is alive he thinks that he is running it with the allies but instead of instead he is running with the attacker the second run is initiated by the attacker who asks if bob is alive bob thinks that this request is from allies but it is from the attacker note that this is a run of protocol 3 begins after the first run of the protocol has begun but completes before the first run ends 
a better response would be a repair protocol 3 there are two options one is include an action to check for this attack and second one include a identifier so this would involve Bob keeping a note of all the protocol 3 sessions that he currently has a open he should then check whether any request message that is receives matches any of his own open request so in include an ident identifier here some sort of identifier the reply that prevents the reflection attack from working there is no point in doing so in the request since it is unprotected and an attacker could change it without detection so next we'll see about protocol 4 so this uh, figure represents the protocol 4 so assumption is there are identical to a protocol 1 expect that we assume that allies and Bob have agreed on the use of strong symmetric encryption algorithm E rather than a MAC so description is given as follows instead of computing a MAC on the reply text ally uses E to encrypt the reply text using the key K allies does not send the reply text to Bob instead of computing and comparing the received MAC on the reply text Bob simply decrypts the received encrypted reply text so here the analysis of protocol 4 is exactly as for a protocol 1 except for the issue of the data origin authentication of allies reply there are two agreements first one is the case against this perhaps the purists viewpoint protocol 4 does not provide data origin authentication because encryption does not does not in general provide data origin authentication second one the case for problems that may arise if encryption is used to provide data origin authentication these mainly arises when the plain text was long and unformed in this case the reply text is short and has specific format thus if a block cipher such as AES is used then it is possible that the reply text is less than one block long hence no block manipulation is possible even if the reply text is two blocks long the ECB mode is used to encrypt these two blocks the format of the reply is specific and many manipulation is likely to be noticed by the Bob so in fifth protocol the protocol dissipated is given in 9.5 figure it's very similar to the protocol 1 except the nonce generated by Bob is replaced by the timestamp generated by Bob so here the assumption is these are the same as the assumption of protocol 1 except that the need of Bob is to have source of randomness is replaced by Bob can generate and verify integrity protected time stamps this requires Bob to have a system clock requiring TB to be integrity protected means that it cannot be manipulated 
by an attacker without subsequent detection of a, a detection by the bob so description is instead of generated a nonce rb bob generates an integrity protected time stamp that is tb this is then includes in both the request and reply as part of his checks on the reply bob check that the reply text includes tb the analysis of protocol 5 is similar to protocol 1 the data origin authentication of allies reply as for the protocol 1 the freshness of allies reply the reply text includes the timestamp tb which bob generated at the start of the protocol so the reply is fresh so assurance that the allies reply correspond to bob request there are two pieces of evidence that reply provides this the first one the reply contains the timestamp tb which bob generated for this run of the protocol assuming that the time timestamp is a sufficient granularity that it is not possible for bob to have the issued the same timestamp of different protocol the second one the reply contains the identifier bob preventing a reflection attacks this thus the protocol uh, 5 meets the three security goals so thus protocol 5 meets the all the three security goals so we'll see the protocol 6 the assumption is these are the same as uh, assumptions of protocol 1 except that need of bob to have random generated is replaced by allies can generate timestamp that bob can verify as part of this assumption we further require that allies and bob have synchronized clocks so description is given the description of the protocol 6 is slightly different different from protocol 1 so we will explain it in more detail the first one bob conducts the following steps to form the request here the bob forms a simplified simplified request message that just con consists of the text it's bob are you okay bob sends the request to allies assuming that she is alive and able to respond allies conducts the following steps to form the reply so here the allies generate timestamp ta and concatenates it to identifier bob and a text yes i am okay to form the reply text allies computes a mac on the reply text using key k the reply text is then concatenated to the MAC to form the reply the ally sends the reply to Bob on receipt of the reply the Bob makes the following checks Bob checks that the received reply text consists of a timestamp TA concatenated to his identifier Bob and meaningful response to his query Bob verifies TA and uses the clock to check that it consists of fresh time. Bob computes a MAC on his received reply text with key K and checks to see if it is matches the received MAC. The last one, if both these checks are satisfactory, then the Bob accepts the reply and and the protocol so the analysis is a protocol 6 is similar to protocol 1 the data origin authentication of allies reply 
and the freshness of allies reply text includes the timestamp ta the reply is fresh assurance that allies reply correspond to bob request unfortunately this is not provided since the request does not contain any of the information that can be used to uniquely identify it thus protocol 6 does not meet all three security goals so we'll see security 7 so seventh protocol variant is closely related to protocol 6 so here the assumption is there are the same as assumption of protocol 6 so description is the bob includes a unique session identifier ids in the request which allies includes a reply text this identifier is not necessary necessarily randomly generated the reply text that is sent in the clear by allies differs from the reply text on which allies computes the mac the difference is the ta is included in the let letter but not the former so analysis is the analysis of protocol 7 is similar to protocol 6 the inclusion of the session identifier ids is intended to remove the concern about linking the reply to the request the omission of ta from the reply text that is sent in the clear at the first just looks like saving the bandwidth since allies and bob have synchronized clock by our assumptions it is not strictly necessary that the data on which the mac is computed matches the reply text so long as bob receives all the cert, uh, critical data that is need need to be check the mac so here we'll see some problem that is bob does not know ta even if they have perfectly synchronized clocks the time that allies issue ta will not be the same time that bob receives the message due to communication delay thus bob does not know all the reply text on which the mac is computed the and hence cannot verify the mac to obtain the data origin authentication the only option is for bob to check all the possible timestamp ta with a responsible window and hope that he finds one that matches while this is inefficient it is worth nothing that this technique is sometimes used in real application to cope with the time delay and clock drift so protocol 7 is easily fixed by the including the ta in both the versions of the reply text has is done in protocol 6 nonetheless this protocol flow demonstrates how sensitive cryptographic protocols are to even the slightness error in their formulation so these are the some of the protocols which are explained here okay so here totally seven protocols are there which are explained in detail so this is not much your analysis of a simple protocols thank you